Welcome to Bloomington Living Hope Lutheran Church. Today we celebrate the festival of Pentecost. Uh, Pentecost took place 50 days after Christ's resurrection from the dead. And on the day of Pentecost, Jesus fulfilled the promise he had made to his disciples to give them a special blessing of the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit came upon his disciples, he gave them boldness and knowledge and understanding about the mission of Jesus Christ. And so the day of Pentecost has been called the, the birth of the New Testament Christian church. We celebrate that today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin. For faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever, but have not. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We continue our sermon series called Acts of the Way, spending time in the Acts of the Apostles, which is the history of the New Testament church, focusing on, on certain individuals. And the person before us today is Barnabas. Our message is based on the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verses 32 through 37. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. There were no needy persons among them. From time to time, those who owned fields or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone as he had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will show forth your praise. Amen. Here's a story. It's a true story. It's a story of three women. These three women are Christians. These three women are neighbors. And these three women happen to be working at home at this time. So these three friends have tried to every day, sometime during the day, go out for a walk together. And they love it and they enjoy it. Not just because they're getting exercise or enjoying their, their friendships, but because they have a chance to talk. It's interesting that all three of these women are having some challenges with the work that they do. And so every day when they walk together, they have a chance to talk about these things, to talk through these things. And in doing so, they uplift each other and they support each other and they share ideas with each other that sometimes may change their attitude to a, a more positive attitude about the work that they're doing. And so this, this walk that these women take is a, an example of the power of encouragement, how meaningful and valuable it really is. Today, we're going to talk about encouragement through one of the New Testament persons known as Barnabas. Barnabas is not really that obscure. The New Testament has a lot to say about Barnabas, but we don't talk about him very much. So here are some of the, the basic details about Barnabas. His given name was Joseph. He was from Cyprus. Joseph was Jewish, and he was an Old Testament church worker. He was a Levite. Joseph was a convert to Christianity and had become very active in the Christian church and was given the name Barnabas. The New Testament tells us that Barnabas had sold the piece of property that he had, and he had taken the proceeds and given it to the church in Jerusalem to help support those in need. We're also told in the New Testament that Barnabas had been asked by the leaders of the church in Jerusalem to go up to the city of Antioch to help and encourage the Christians there, to encourage the spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ there. We're also told in scripture that Joseph, also known as Barnabas, was the one who went and found Saul, who we know as the apostle Paul, and brought Saul or Paul to the church in Jerusalem and presented Paul before the leaders at the church of Jerusalem. At that time, the leaders at, of the church were afraid of Saul or Paul because he had been a persecutor of the Christian faith and they were very uncertain as to 
who this Saul really was, but it was Barnabas or Joseph who encouraged them to accept Saul or Paul, that his conversion was true and real and that Jesus Christ had, had told him that he was to be involved in the work of the church. The Holy Spirit had then paired Paul and Barnabas as a missionary team. And during their, their work together, we learned from Scripture that Barnabas was a great support and encouragement to the Apostle Paul during their time together. We're also told that this pairing of Paul and Barnabas split. And this split took place over a young man named John Mark, who was a cousin of Barnabas. John Mark had traveled with Paul and Barnabas on their missionary trip, but he had deserted them and gone back to Jerusalem. And the Apostle Paul was very upset by that. Later on, John Mark wanted to rejoin them. The Apostle Paul wanted nothing to do with that. But Barnabas, being the person he is, wanted to give his cousin John Mark a second chance. And as a result of that, Paul and Barnabas split. Paul joined Silas and continued his missionary work, and Barnabas joined John Mark, and they went on to do mission work together. But when you take a look at all the things that the, the scriptures have to say about Joseph, you see he was very much an encourager. When you look at how he was willing to sell property to help people, how he encouraged the New Testament church to accept the apostle Paul, as he supported Paul during his ministry and encouraged him there, even encouraging John Mark to continue the work of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's no wonder that the, the people in the church of Jerusalem gave Joseph of Cyprus a new name. And that new name was Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. So what can we learn about encouragement through Barnabas? Well, first of all, we need to ask ourselves a question. And the question is this, am I an encourager? Some of us have a personality where encouraging other people just comes naturally. And encouragement is also one of the gifts the Spirit endows. We find that in Romans chapter 12 for people to do the work in the New Testament church. But if we find that we don't have a personality that generally wants to encourage people or we don't have the gift of generosity, of encouragement, I should say, we still need to grow in encouraging each other within the Christian church and outside of the Christian church. We all know the value of encouragement as we look at Barnabas. We see how valuable his encouragement was in the early New Testament church. And we've also experienced the value of encouragement. For example, there have been times in our own lives when we have had difficulties and God has used someone to do something or say something to lift us up and to support us and to make us think differently and more positively about our situation that God has brought into our lives people who are encouraging and have helped us make lemonade out of lemons. So there is great value from our own experience to encouragement. So how can we get better at being an encourager? Our motivation to encourage, as is everything we do as Christians, is the cross. When we look at the cross, we are reminded of God's love for us. We are reminded of that, that great sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for us, that he, he paid for our sins. And that's affirmed by his resurrection from the dead. But when we know that as a result of what Christ has done on the cross, that we belong to him and that we are under his care and that we are forgiven and that we are going to heaven, those things are certainties for us. That is very encouraging to us, no matter how things may be going on in life, good or bad. With that encouragement as motivation, we need to see if there are any sins that are, are curbing us from being better at encouraging other people. For example, 
There is the sin of pride. There is the sin of selfishness. There is the sin of lovelessness, having a general apathy toward others and the care of others. Or there may be the sin of envy and jealousy or the sin of being judgmental of other people, being sinfully hard on other individuals. If we find that these are sins that we struggle with and they're getting in the way of our encouraging other people, then we need to repent. We need to go to God and confess those sins to God and then know and believe that we have God's forgiveness for that sin or those sins in Jesus Christ. And then we need to partner with the Holy Spirit to curb and and put away that sin in our lives and that will prepare us to be a better encourager. As we go through that process of repentance and look to, to actively be an encourager, we need to be aware of the opportunities that, that God brings to us in life so that we can be an encouragement to somebody else because we may be the very person that God is using to lift up somebody and to support somebody. So how can we be better at encouraging our spouses, for example? How can we be better at encouraging our children? How can we be better at encouraging extended members of our families? Or how can we be better at encouraging our parents? Or how can we get better at encouraging our friends or our neighbors? Or how can we be better at encouraging people at work? Or how can we be better at encouraging people who, as we meet them in life, are are there and they, they serve us in certain ways? Or how can we be better at encouraging someone that just happens to cross our path in life, but they need some encouragement, even though we may not know who they are? We know from experience that being encouraged, being uplifted, being supportive matters, and it glorifies God. So let's, uh, motivated by the encouragement we receive from what Jesus did on the cross, let's set aside and curb sin that keeps us from encouraging. Let's seize and act on those opportunities we have that God provides us to encourage other people so that like Barnabas and his name, you and I can be called sons and daughters of encouragement. Amen. On this day of Pentecost, we are reminded of God the Holy Spirit and what he has done in our lives, that he's blessed us with faith. He lives within us. He's the one who helps us fight against sin and to live our lives in a God-pleasing way. So in our gratitude to God the Holy Spirit, we have an opportunity to respond with our our gifts and offerings. You can do so through our ministry. You can do so by clicking on the link that you find under the description of our YouTube video. You can also do so by mail or online at blh.org. Your gifts and offerings are, are truly appreciated so that we can continue to partner with the Holy Spirit in doing the work of the church and of growing the church. Let us pray. Lord, we bring before you today those graduating from various schools at all levels. This year is so different for them in that they won't be able to celebrate their accomplishments in ways we have done in the past. In spite of that, help them find joy in their achievement. As these graduates move forward, help them to take what they have learned and their skills, and to grow in their knowledge and abilities. Also enable them to use these things to find accomplishment in life, support for their families and themselves, and the betterment of our society and our world. Also, Lord, on this festival of Pentecost, we give special thanks and praise to you, the Holy Spirit, for who you are, and your work in and with us. 
Come, O Spirit. Come as holy fire and continue to burn in us. Come as holy wind and cleanse us from sin within. Come as holy light and lead us in the darkness to the light of your word. Come as holy truth and dispel our ignorance and doubt. Come as holy power and enable us, even in our weakness, to be strong for you in what we say or do. Come as holy life and dwell in us. Convict us, convert us, consecrate us to be your servants to your world. Amen. And now we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive with a believing heart the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Church of Christ.